Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a video on introducing the next project in the shop. So my wife has been wanting this specific vehicle for basically her entire life and it's her dream car. And we've been looking for about a year or so for this specific vehicle and we finally found it. And before I get into it too deep, don't skip the video because it's not what you think. But behind me, you will see vehicle that we picked up this weekend. So this is a 1995 two door four wheel drive blazer. And it looks extremely stupid right now because all four tires were flat and it was cheaper for me to jump on marketplace and buy this set of 1983 El Camino rally wheels with their 14 inch wheels. But it gives me something to be able to roll it around on. But that is going to be the base for my wife's dream rig. But like I said, if you'll give me just a minute, I'll kind of explain this. And surely you don't think that uh, well, I mean, maybe somebody's idea of their dream rig is a 1995 4.3 liter S10 Blazer. But I'll be right back and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, I'm back. This is my wife, Amy. And like I was just saying, we picked up her dream rig this weekend. Car you've been wanting since forever. 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 Uh, and... Newsflash, it's not a 95 Bronco, or yeah, 1995 Bronco. So I'm going to let Amy tell you what it is. You want to tell them or show them first? Uh, let's just show them okay. because I am not one with the words. Okay. So that is it. What is it? It's a 1964 Scout. 880. 80. 80. 1964 Scout 80, and Amy and I have both been looking for this specific vehicle for how long? About a year, About maybe? A year. Uh, she was very gracious in letting me do my projects. Uh, I was mainly only doing the one blue truck, but ended up doing the red truck, and she, did a, she started a new career, and she had to get rid of her two-door Jeep Wrangler and she loved that she loved just like a little compact four-wheel drive sport utility vehicle but this is much cooler and this is more of what she wanted anyway so we found this where did we find this uh, on facebook marketplace and it was um, in southern texas and the gentleman was nice enough for a fee of course not out of the kindness of his heart to transport it up here all the way from south of houston or yeah east of houston um all the way up here to um, northern arkansas and right before the hurricane hit so yeah uh, it's been in storage for a few couple of decades and um yeah when did uh we looked at the plate to see the last time it was registered it was 2008 uh, 2004 Four. is the last time it was registered in Nevada. I guess we figured out it lived, as far as we can tell, most of its life in Nevada. Mm -hmm. um, so it's in remarkably good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these scouts are completely rusted out. So this one really, it's got some rust underneath the bumper. We'll just do a quick walk around here. It's got some rust right behind the bumper here on the end cap. You can tell, look at the body lines. You can tell somebody did a poor job of Bondo there. So it's got some Bondo here in the quarters. Uh, don't think it's too bad. I mean, especially compared to what we have seen in most of these, they're, most of the time the fenders and rockers are completely gone. It's got a spot here with a little filler. Uh, you can see this little spot right here. It's more of just a dent that somebody filled, but it's this whole area here has Bondo, and we don't really know 
how bad it is yet. We aren't going to get into sanding it. It's got, you know, just a few little dents here. It's got a little spot down here on the fender, but that's pretty much it for this side other than surface rust. It's got a little hole there. I'm guessing that was maybe for a radio antenna at some point. A little bit of surface rust there, no rust through. Front, the front cap, most of those are usually dented up real bad. It's got one little spot right there. Uh, on both sides of the hood, the, I guess this is a weak spot in these scouts, but there's a little crack there. I think we can just drill a hole at the end of that crack to end of that crack, and then just zip that up after cleaning a little bit of surface rust out. This side, uh, we do, I think there's a little dent right down here. That looks like a dent on camera above the hinge. It's not, that's just uh, dirt or some kind of discoloration. But this side's even better than the other side. A little bit of Bondo right here, but it's in really good shape. Um, the inside, um, it's pretty good. There's a little bit of surface rust on the tub. Uh, it's kind of dented up, but it's, can't really find any rust throughs on that either. The only other thing we noticed was back here on the tailgate, there's some cracks in the metal right here and over here that we're guessing is probably from the spare tire. Somebody took a piece of big angle and bolted it to the tailgate. I'm guessing to kind of stabilize that tailgate, but we, uh, I'll have to do some research. I think on all these cracks, we can do the same thing we're gonna do on the hood. Probably just drill a hole at the end of these cracks to end those cracks and then weld that up and fix that. Other than that, the tailgate's in remarkably good shape. Most of the time we found those tailgates are usually rusted out around the bottom too. So do you want to show them the inside? Amy? Of course. So the inside was painted at some point. It was originally green and then it was painted this lovely blue. So we have quite a bit of flaking um, happening in here. Um, but otherwise, no rust through on the floor pans and um, all the knobs and everything are original, but uh, we were able to get it to turn over, but we're not going to keep this engine, so that didn't really matter. Um, the windshield has a crack in it. We'll have to get that replaced, and the windows do roll up and down after some generous helping of uh, WD-40 on them, but they do go up and down, so that was exciting. Um, we didn't get a top with it, so I'm going to do the soft top on it um, and just make it kind of my knock around um, rig. So I'm excited. I have my responsible vehicle and now I have my fun toy. <laughs> but we, we won't. She does not want to keep the patina. No, thank you. Uh, she wants it to be mint green with a black soft top. Obviously, we'll have to put a roll bar in here mm -hmm. for safety and stability of the just the body. One thing we didn't mention was it does have the uh, divider here behind the seats, that uh, bulkhead. So this truck it was originally a truck. It, it wasn't a Scout, but... It does have all the holes popped in here for a full top. So we could get a full top if we could find one. What we have ran into though, is this is a 1964 and the Scouts, I guess 61 through 66, I believe were Scout 80s. They didn't come out with the Scout 800 until 67. I could be wrong on that, but it does, I guess 61 and 62, on the top had five holes in the top four or in the windshield frame for the top to bolt down to and it bolted down from the outside this one has seven holes and it bolts in from the inside so i believe we don't know anything about these scouts we're new to them so i believe anything from like a 63 through a 70 top will bolt down so with all that being said, um, this Scout originally came with a 152 cubic inch 
four cylinder and it has a three speed transmission and manual transfer case. It, um, I think originally from the factory, it has a um, 92 horsepower rating and several of the people we've talked to say that the top speed is like 55 miles an hour. That's just not gonna work. So back to the first vehicle I showed you, it's 95 two door four wheel drive S10 Blazer and found a guy on YouTube that did a full chassis swap of the Scout onto the 95 Blazer frame. So what that'll get, let us do is we will have the, the 95 Blazer has front disc brakes, it has rear drum. I thought it was four wheel disc brakes, but you can get the 98 through 2006 Blazer rear ends have disc brakes. So we could go ahead and get a full four wheel disc brakes if we just found a rear end out of one of those, which those are plentiful. The four door blazers are dime a dozen everywhere. Two door four wheel drive blazers are extremely hard to find in the four wheel drive version. We were able to find one, 400 bucks. So that'll give us disc brakes. That will also give us power steering. Just to convert this original frame and steering system, power steering is a thousand dollars minimum. Disc brakes, another $500 just for the front. Uh, and then you're still left with the weak motor. So the Blazers have a 4.3 liter uh, motor, which is basically a 350 with two cylinders chopped off. It has a 4L60 transmission and MP232 transfer case, I believe. The only problem we've run into with that so far is that 1995 Blazer is a one year only Blazer. The motor is one year only, the transmission is one year only. It was in the transition year for OBD, and I'm saying it right this time, I didn't know my other videos, OBD one to OBD two, so it's actually a OBD 1.5. So the problem with that is, is the motor or transmission ever goes out and we wanna replace it, one or the other, we have to find a 1995. So. What I figure we might end up doing is these 4.3 liters are cheap in a dime a dozen. And from 2000 through 2006, they also use the 411 ECU, which is the same thing the blue truck uses and the same thing the red truck uses. So probably try to find a decent low mileage 4.3 and transmission to go behind that. So we can swap it in and if anything ever goes wrong, we can just go to any junkyard, get a Silverado, Blazer. I mean, these those 4.3s came in everything, so we can find those. The best part about doing this swap too, besides having the monitored amenities, is, well, fuel injection, also so easy starts and reliability, but we'll be able to go to O'Reilly's and get any part we could ever need for a 1995 Blazer mechanically and just throw it in there and it'll be cheap. They're cheap to work on. So. Anyway, I think that's about it on the introduction of Amy's dream vehicle, the 1964 Scout. Uh, I will say this is going to be a lengthy project. This is not going to be the three-month full complete build like the red truck. So Mostly because he's making me help, <laughs> and I'm not much of a help, so... But this this will be a work you can see also... The wiring, somebody decided they were gonna to try to get it running. It is a complete disaster. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna to have to rewire the entire thing. Probably do a conversion. The windshield wipers on these um, are vacuum operated. So you can see it's got a little port here for a vacuum tube. The line runs down the windshield frame and then through a hole here and then to the engine and to turn the windshield wipers on, I believe, you just push this in or pull it out to turn them off and on. And I'm guessing you pull it out and that pulls vacuum and then the windshield wipers run one speed. Uh, they do make electric motor conversions for those. I'm probably gonna go ahead and talk Amy into letting us do that. So she have reliable windshield wipers. Zero fight on your hands yeah. on that one. No, <laughs> no sweat whatsoever. So anyway, I think that's it for this video. Amy's Dream Scout and we are going to slowly start working on it 
and we will be putting videos out as we do that and document this whole build of her little dream rig so that being said thank you for watching our videos and stay tuned for the scout 1964 scout 80 build we'll see you in the next video